Hey, thanks for picking up the voice book. So I'm Jim Schwebel, the CEO of Neuralex, uh, the author of the book. And I just wanted to take, quickly take you through the journey uh, as to how this book could be useful for you. Uh, but first, just a little bit about Neuralex. Um, Neuralex uh, is a company we started about two years ago, and our vision is to make voice computing accessible to everyone. Um, just like uh, Microsoft created the operating system for most personal computers, uh, we believe that Neuralex can build a portfolio of technologies that powers a lot of the software behind voice devices. Um, we think this is incredibly important with voice devices being everywhere and ubiquitous, with phones, everything today being voice enabled, hands-free. Um, and going in the future, we're, we're launching a, a survey product going into next year, uh, early next year, that's sort of like a survey monkey for voice enabled surveys. So stay tuned for that, but uh, that gives you a little bit of our background. Uh, we think this, this vision sort of applies very well to this book. Um, I've been personally training a lot of fellows uh, in our company uh, over the past year. About 60 people have gone through this program over the last two years to get trained on, on how to build voice computing software. Uh, and uh, time and time again, I've, I've had one-off meetings where I've had a, you know, do a coding session and how do you featureize a voice file and, and put it through a machine learning model and, and uh, build software and what is a codec, uh, things like this. And so I thought a great medium to sort of teach this material would be through a book. Um, so I ended up writing it uh, about uh, three months ago. I wrote it all in a month and a half and edited it for another month. And uh, this is sort of a grand experiment. And uh, we think that this is a great book for you if, if you want to start, start learning how to code in Python, um, if, if you want to learn how to code voice even better. Uh, but it's really intended to be a starter book with a lot of great materials for you to start. Um, uh, in addition, if you're, you're just starting out in Python uh, and, and you don't know how to, uh, how to do any Python, there's two books here that you might want to check out. Uh, the NLTK book is actually where I started to learn how to code. Uh, it's, a, it's a library uh, that is all about natural language processing and, and how to uh, analyze uh, text data. Um, Automate the Boring Stuff is another great uh, book out there that, that goes through how to do a lot of basic things uh, like what is a list in Python, what's dictionary, and, and, and really a lot of really cool applications uh, like controlling your computer and mouse with a, a, a graphical user interface and, and keyboard. Um, so, so check these books out if beyond this book, if you're just starting out and want to learn, um, definitely get some value beyond, beyond the book right here. Um, so yeah, so I wanted to start out uh, just talking about what is voice computing. Um, you might have heard this term many times in the media, uh, out and describing, you know, Alexa devices and other things, uh, but it's really vaguely defined, so it's it's quite interesting. Uh, the first thing is what is voice not what is not uh, the definition for voice computing? Uh, it is not equal to speech recognition. Uh, a lot of the traditional outlets like TechCrunch or The Economist confuse these terms, uh, so whereas speech recognition is just recognizing. A, a, a voice file and transforming it into text uh, and, and looking for recognizing speech and phonemes. Voice computing is a much broader term. You can think of speech recognition as sort of a subset of natural language processing, um, but voice computing is actually ubiquitous and, and has many more components to it than, than speech recognition. Uh, it also has a lot of data science where you could build machine learning models, uh, featureize mo uh, the data, uh, voice files, into like frequency coefficients and things like that. You can visualize the data. It also has a lot of things with codecs uh, where you can create a WAV file, for example, from a microphone on the computer. Uh, you can manipulate a lot of the, the files, like add filter effects and transform them. Uh, you can encrypt and decrypt voice data uh, and, and even go to things as far as deploy voice uh, computing architectures on servers. So, uh, so one thing is I think this is a very uh, fragmented field that this term actually is unifying and if defined correctly, it can be really powerful for structuring content of this book and, and other fields as well. So uh, to compress that into a definition, voice computing is the discipline that develops hardware or software to process voice inputs. So by defining voice computing by the data type, it, it helps us sort of focus the discipline. And so you can kind of look deeper is like at voice computers as the hardware systems that are assembled with software to process voice inputs. And uh, we'll use this term uh, throughout the book and, uh, and it creates a very flexible definition for us to focus the content of the book. Uh, and so some, some software for voice computing, you can think of things that can read, write, 
record, clean, encrypt, decrypt, playback uh, audio, transcode audio into different formats like WAV file to say FLAC format, transcribe audio, speech to text, uh, compress audio files, uh, publish them online onto like mediums like YouTube, featureize them for modeling and, and even visualization. And these are just some of the things software can do. Um, so it, you can see that there's a lot here uh, with what you can build in terms of software. In addition to hardware, uh, there's a lot of things you can do with hardware. Um, I go into the book on how to build uh, a lot of this hardware from scratch. Uh, a lot of the hardware you see to the right are smart speakers like the Alexa device, uh, Echo, and a Google Assistant. Um, but uh, you can actually build your own custom voice computers and voice computing hardware depending on your requirements. Um, so you might be asking why now? Why, why is voice computing a thing now, not, not uh, like past or, or far into the far future? Well, we're seeing that user interfaces are becoming increasingly invisible in terms of voice and, and hands-free. And um, one of the things that uh, has enabled the shift is sort of the shift from a keyboard to the mouse, to the smartphone. Now we've entered the voice first era where a lot of these smart speakers are on market because a lot of the costs for these smart speakers and voice devices have gone down over time um, with Gecko Dots being nearly 50 bucks, uh, whereas before it was, it was nearly $700 to get a smartphone. Uh, in addition, we're seeing a huge footprint of voice computing devices uh, all across America and, and internationally um, with over uh, 35 to 40 million devices already being sold uh, in 2017 and going into this year even more. Um, there's also been a lot of advances in cloud infrastructure with Google Cloud, AWS, and Microsoft Azure that have enabled developers to quickly build a lot of applications and, and creating a huge development community around voice first devices and software. Uh, another thing that has really led to the convergence of this trend is that there's a lot of open source data sets out there. Uh, the Common Voice project was released by Mozilla Foundation. There's over 100,000 voices annotated with accents, ages, genders, ethnicity, genders and things like that. Um, and so that has enabled a lot of work in, in the deep speech model and other models that have uh, created the ability to create transcription models that are completely open source, uh, which is amazing work that they're doing. Google also released AudioSet with uh, over 500 classes of annotated labels. Uh, things like animal sounds like dogs, cats are there, as well as uh, things that are like male, female voices and even stringed instruments. And so it's a very rich data set uh, for you to analyze and build models around uh, in voice computing uh, and, and otherwise um, in, in audio. Uh, there's also a lot of, uh, data sets on Kaggle uh, with speech accents, genders, um, and even the urban sound data set that, that can simulate urban sounds uh, all across uh, the city that, that can add noisy data sets to make it useful to model. These open source data sets have led to a lot of activity from startups and investors to support these startups to create platforms um, and, and enabling technologies, uh, hardware devices and, and native voice first skills uh, to, to, really, um, to really advance this field and, and create innovation. Taken together, all of these factors have really led to a, a thriving voice community and, and a really great time for voice computing. So now that you know voice computing and what it is and how it's useful uh, and, and how uh, we, there's a lot of growth in the field, uh, you might be asking, why, why get this book? Uh, why is this book useful to you? So the first thing is I think there's a lot of uh, Python libraries out there and uh, a lot of them are fragmented. And with this new unifying definition for voice computing, we can actually defragment a lot of these libraries, piece them together into a single definition and really gain a lot of value uh, in the Python community in, in an open source sort of format, uh, which is pretty awesome. So it unifies a lot of these libraries. Uh, this book is also useful because it, it actually provides new training data sets for you. Uh, we have uh, libraries for training emotional models for your voice, uh, training diseases like depression and psychosis and other diseases from the voice um, for you to use openly um, and, and even commercialize work if you, you'd like to um, with, with an Apache license. Um, you can even create your own data sets off YouTube. Uh, and, uh, and this is how we within Neuralex do a lot of data, data mining and data labeling uh, with this repository online um, that we can use. Uh, there's also a lot of machine learning models that this book provides to you through the repository uh, that you can use. Things like determining the ages, genders, ethnicities, accents, music genres, 
uh, the type of speech you're using, as well as your fatigue level and audio quality. Uh, all these things uh, we use within Neuralax, within our architecture, but we wanted to open that up to you, uh, the innovators of the future within voice computing, so that uh, you can reapply these and, and actually use them potentially as features um, within your own modeling efforts. Uh, this book also has a lot of great GitHub examples. Uh, there are over 200 scripts uh, within the GitHub repository that you can use to get started. Uh, it goes through each chapter of the book uh, side by side and uh, it kind of goes through and, and has great documentation for you to kind of go through uh, either copy paste this into your own code base, call in the repo, um, or even teach others uh, to get them up to speed. Um, I find these, th this documentation be a great way to, to channel beginners uh, and, and new members of the NeuroX team to get up to speed on how to manipulate audio, how to read audio, as well as things like uh, designing a server architecture from scratch, which is pretty awesome. So um, even if you don't buy the book, definitely check out this GitHub repo. Uh, you can also uh, utilize uh, one of the things that the book provides, which is a voice assistant, uh, Nala. Uh, she actually uh, is uh, the world's first open source, fully open source voice assistant in Python. Um, so Nala has a, a really innovative wake word engine and uh, action library all written in Python. Um, and, uh, and it's quite remarkable with what she can do. Um, and uh, it, it, definitely check out the repo after this, but uh, she can do all sorts of powerful things like plan your trip, uh, you know, meditate, uh, making jokes. Uh, she can even do things like setting alarms, uh, you know, reboot your computer, shut down the computer, play music, all the typical things you do. And uh, she also has the ability to, to do multi-query capability uh, like uh, meditating and then going uh, to restart the computer all in series if you if you uh, separate the intents with ands. So she can do a lot. Uh, definitely check out Nala. Uh, she, she, uh, you actually build her in the book, so you kind of learn all about how to build a voice assistant from scratch, which is super useful. Uh, the last part of the book uh, actually goes over how to get involved. And this is sort of really, I think, one of the best ways that it's useful. Within Neuralex, like I mentioned, we have this thing called the tribe model. And uh, this kind of emerged uh, one day, we were sitting in, in a room as a company, um, and so many outstanding people reached out to us and said, I, I wanna be a part of what you're doing. I love your vision and, and I love what you're doing. Uh, how can I be involved? Um, it was kind of overwhelming. We didn't really know how to do it. So he said, what if one day uh, you go to the startup and you could edit it like you would edit Wikipedia. Uh, you get paired with a mentor and uh, propose a project alongside that mentor and, and code it uh, to add value to the person that's within it, the tribe member, as well as uh, to Neuralex in, in a way that it's released under an Apache license um, and could scale. And, and not only that, like year after year, each tribe member who completes a demo can mentor future tribe members so it could scale exponentially over time. And so we started this model and since we've, we've actually implemented it um, and uh, we've done it a few times, and we've had over 60 fellows all across the United States and internationally. It's been super successful. We've had a lot of projects, um, a lot of work uh, all throughout our work in speech diagnosis work uh, research, as well as uh, in, in a lot of uh, data science modeling. Um, and uh, and you, here you can see how, how a lot of uh, the, the tribe members collaborate. Usually you pick a topic, like a research proposal or, or a research topic, a data science topic or a software topic. Uh, research, usually the goal is to collect some sort of data to model. Uh, data science is usually to model the data that's collected. And a software demo is usually some sort of, uh, uh, you know, side project in, in addition to the core products of, of Neuralex uh, that you can use um, uh, as a demo. Uh, for example, one was a Elasticsearch demo uh, in Kibana visualization for, for voice data. Uh, and so this all culminates in a demo day where everyone presents and, and you get uh, ranked and, and uh, get prizes at the end. And so uh, that's a way that if you read this book, uh, you can definitely get involved and you fit really well within the Neuralex structure. Um, and so to piece this all together, how the book's useful, um, there isn't really much out there in terms of voice computing, in terms of education. You might get trained at MIT or, or an engineering school at like Georgia Tech where I went and uh, you get uh, potentially in a computer science program that's in computational linguistics to do some research, but, uh, but you really don't get the whole knowledge set of, of voice computing, the subset of it. Uh, the second best option is you could go to a cloud provider, uh, build an Alexa skill and, and, and be perfectly content uh, working within that ecosystem. Uh, personally, I think that's pretty limiting um, because one, you're kind of uh, reduced to all the terms you use with Amazon and 
you don't get access to the raw audio files uh, when you use the Alexa voice service, for example. So you're limited in your ability to model that voice and only use transcripts. Um, and so I think the third best option is to self-learn your, 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 yourself in voice computing, uh, build your own open source apps or proprietary apps, go, go start a launch and startup if you want to. Uh, this book could be a great uh, mechanism for you to sort of get up to speed and do that. Um, and I, I hope it really can enable you to, to think in, innovatively and uh, really uh, disrupt this field. Uh, so it's beyond all the key players, the big companies. Uh, we need more aggressive small companies that go in there and compete um, and beat, beat them. So uh, again, I'm Jim Schwabel. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for your interest in, our, in, in the book. Um, if I can be of value to you in any way, uh, just reach out to me. My email is uh, js at neurolex, N-E-U-R-O-L-E-X dot C-O. And uh, I'm ha happy to help in any way I can. Um, and uh, here are some links you can check out for the things I'm covered here. Uh, things like Nala, the, the assistant, the Neurolex website, the tribe program, FAQ, and, and some of the other repos that you can check out. Um, and and uh, I, I really uh, hope that uh, you could buy the book and, and get value. Um, or if anything, uh, definitely watch this video and get some value. So great. So uh, take care, guys. Uh, thanks so much for listening in and uh, have a great uh, rest of the day.